This video will discuss Le Chatelier's principle in chemical equilibrium. So to discuss this concept, let's look at this following reaction. So we have a formic acid dimer here. So here the two formic acid molecules are associated. They're hydrogen bonded to one another, and that's a strong enough hydrogen bond that we'll consider this to be a single chemical species. Uh, we're going to assume this is also in the gas phase. And this is in equilibrium with the dissociated uh, quantity, which is two of the monomer of our uh, formic acid monomer here in the gas phase. So we could equivalently write out this reaction as the dimer is in equilibrium with two molecules of the monomer. So what we want to know here is what is going to be our equilibrium constant and how does that change with pressure? Okay, so let's build what we have from general chemistry called an ice table. We take each quantity in the reaction and we look at what is its uh, concentration or the number of moles of it initially, what is it in the, what is it changed during the reaction, and what is its equilibrium value. So let's assume that we start off with the dimer at one bar of pressure. Let's assume that we have the monomer starting off at zero, that there's no monomer there, and that the sum of these two is the total pressure, which is equal to one plus zero, which is one. Okay, so as the extent of reaction proceeds, as the reaction goes, we consume the dimer. Its coefficient is one, so it's minus epsilon for its coefficient. We're going to produce the monomer, so its coefficient is two, it's a product, so we do plus, so the change in the number of moles of the monomer is plus two epsilon. So minus epsilon plus two epsilon is plus epsilon for the total change in uh, the number of moles in the gas phase. So the initial minus the change is going to be our equilibrium or our final value. One minus epsilon, which is one minus epsilon. Zero plus two epsilon gives, sorry, this is not an epsilon, this is C. I, I'm confusing the, the letter epsilon and the letter C. Okay, zero plus two C is two C and then one plus C is one plus C. Okay, so what is the partial pressure of our dimer and our, and our equilibrium or our final uh, value? So we know that the partial pressure of a, given, of a given quantity in a mixture of gases is equal to its mole fraction times the total pressure of whatever that gas is. So our pressure of the dimer is going to be its mole fraction, which is the number of moles of dimer divided by the total number of moles. So one minus epsilon over one, one minus C plus, over one plus C times the pressure. We have the pressure of the monomer is equal to its final value divided by the total number of moles times the pressure. Two C over one plus C times P. All right, so what is our uh, reaction quotient here? Um, the, at equilibrium, this will be the equilibrium constant, but if we're not assuming that we have a uh, value of C here, which is the equilibrium value, we just have a reaction quotient. So our reaction quotient is equal to, uh, we have the pressure of the monomer squared. So uh, the monomer is a product, goes in the numerator, coefficient of two, we square it. We're assuming we're in units of bar here for pressure, so we're not going to divide by uh, P naught. So PM squared divided by D is a reactant. It goes in the denominator. Its coefficient is one. We take it to a power of one, so just PD in the denominator. So substituting in what these values are, two C over one plus C quantity squared times P squared divided by one minus C over one plus C times P. So P squared cancels with P, leaves us with one P in the numerator. We have a, this is gonna put a one plus C quantity squared in the denominator. This will put a one plus C in the numerator. That cancels out leaving a one plus C in the denominator. Then we have two C squared is four C squared. And we have one minus C, which remains one minus C. And our single pressure that's left over um, one plus C times one minus C is gonna equal one minus C squared. 
just foiling that polynomial. So we have that the reaction quotient equals 4 times the extent of reaction squared over 1 minus the extent of reaction squared times the pressure of the total system. Okay, so moving on to our Gibbs energy of reaction, delta Rg equals the standard Gibbs energy of reaction, delta Rg naught, plus Rt times the natural log of the, of the reaction quotient Q. We know that the standard Gibbs reaction energy equals minus Rt times the natural log of the equilibrium constant, minus Rt log Kp, then plus Rt log Q, we can add these two together by the following. We have that the Gibbs energy change of the reaction equals RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient divided by the equilibrium constant. So substituting in our value of our reaction quotient, we have that the delta RG equals RT natural log 4C squared over 1 minus C squared times P over our equilibrium constant. Now we'll remember that uh, the Gibbs energy equals zero at equilibrium. So what has to be the case is that our equilibrium constant is, has to be, if we solve this equation for it, has to be four times the extent of reaction at equilibrium squared divided by one minus the extent of reaction at equilibrium squared times pressure, which is agreeing with what we already saw down here for the reaction quotient. We said if you're at equilibrium, then this is just the equilibrium constant and we have the equilibrium extent of reaction. If you're not at equilibrium, then this is the reaction quotient and the extent of reaction is whatever value you choose. Okay, so there's our equilibrium constant in terms of the extent of the reaction. So what do we see here? So if the pressure goes up, then P goes up, then the term here has to go down. And the term here goes down whenever the extent of reaction goes down. If you plot this out, uh, if you plot 4x squared over 1 minus x squared, you can convince yourself that the value of that is going to go down whenever you decrease the value of x. Similarly, if the pressure goes down, uh, this quantity in parentheses has to go up, so the extent of reaction has to go up. But we'll notice here, that there are more moles of gas in the products than there are in the reactants. So the total pressure of the system is going to increase the further the extent of the reaction goes. So if the external pressure increases, our system responds to decrease the extent of reaction and decrease the total pressure of our reactants and products. If the pressure goes down, our system responds by producing more moles of gas and responding to counteract uh, that, that perturbation by increasing the extent of the reaction. So this is a demonstration of Le Chatelier's principle, and that is that the system responds to external perturbations to its state to minimize their effect on the state of the system. So if the pressure goes up, we're going to go towards the side that consumes moles or decreases the pressure of our system. If the pressure goes down, we're going to respond to move towards the direction that will increase the pressure of our system. And this is, uh, follows for other things as well. If we absorb heat, we're going to respond to uh, the direction that, that decreases the heat. If we, if we lose heat, we're going to respond towards the direction that produces heat. The equilibrium constant is constructed such that the system always responds to uh, go against and minimize the effect of however our system has changed.